Elizabeth Nakakoni on sign language interpretation. Now we start off this newscast with exciting news that Ugandans have been waiting for all day. Uganda Muslim Supreme Council has announced Eid prayers will be held tomorrow, Friday the 21st of April 2023. Now the acting director of Sharia, Sheikh Zaid Lubanga, made the announcement at the National Mosque and urged Muslims to celebrate in the path of Allah. We have details. Chinana Mutanu Mute Kwamu Juze Omoendo Gwenaku Is Aramagan Eda Mumugurumi Zekatonda Quecho Jebarungam Yam Obo Yao Nemueva Za Sura Tulbakara Eokubiri Ayachkumi Chinana Mutanu Abu Huraira radhi Allahu anhu ya gamba nti Umubaka wa Allah ebienga ya nemi nembebele kuye ya gamba nti Sumu li ruuyatihi wa aftiru li ruuyatihi mutafakun alayhi Musibe nga mula vya umwezi kwa Ramadhan Era musiburu kuke nga mula vya umwezi kwa shawal Mutafakun alayhi ya gati wako Bukhari ne muslimu Mtuwaru wa mkisaguno okutegeza, okubategeza, na basira mubo na mu Uganda, nti omwezi, gula vise, era idil fitiri, ya kujaguziwa, era ya kusaribwa encha, kuruo kutano, ngena kuzo omwezi ya wili muru mu, omwezi ogokuna, umaka kumibiri, Awiri mwe satu, esawa biri ezo kumacha. Okusala kumuzikiti o mkuru, mugwanga e kampala mkade, kuja kukule mberu wa his eminence, mufti wa Uganda, Dr. Sheikh Shaban Ramadhan Mubadje. Kuluwa Uganda Muzili Musprimu Council, nekuluwa his eminence, mufti wa Uganda, abasira mwena, Mbagaliza okusala idil fitir enunji no kuja guza nga mugo velera ama teka ne mpisa zobu siram Allah abawe mikisa ne viengera. Now to top that up is an official announcement from the Ministry of Public Service on the same issue. The Honourable Minister of the Public Service informs the general public that tomorrow, the 21st of April 2023, is Eid al-Fitri and will be observed as a public holiday throughout Uganda to oppose the Public Holidays Act 1965, signed the Permanent Secretary Catherine Bitara Kwate Musingwire. Now, moving on, President Yoweri Museveni has directed the Civil Aviation Authority to upgrade road infrastructures of four aerodromes in Uganda. The move is aimed at strengthening Uganda's tourism potential with tourists' movement within the country destined for enhancement. Museveni was speaking during the first quarterly broadcast on trade and investment, an initiative by the Presidential Advisory Committee on Export, Industry and Development. Henry Okrut reports. When four airdromes have their road infrastructure upgraded, the tourism sector in Uganda will not be the same. This was the message by President Yoweri Museveni as he directed Civil Aviation Authority to renovate Pakuba, Kasese, Kisoro and Kidepo airfields. To allow arrivals that don't need to first get to Entebbe Airport, the Uganda Road Fund has money to do this and it should act immediately. When appropriate improvements have been made, these aerodromes should also have an international code to allow tourists, tourists booked directly to the game parks. The CAA should work with the private sector and the CAO and uh, IATA where necessary to gazette 
and improve safety standards so that these aerodromes can be given international, international codes. To this effect, Museveni wants Uganda Communications Commission to extend broadband connections to aerodromes. I was told in South Africa that many of our, our diaspora doctors would like to perform surgeries for patients or teach students in Uganda online, but hospitals and universities lack 5G network facilities. I direct UCC Uganda Communications Commission to work with the telecoms to roll this one out. It was his first quarterly broadcast as to honor his promise that he made towards the end of March 2023. The first address focused on tourism with the private sector asked to find more investors for the hotel subsector. The private sector can help us get more airlines to land in Uganda and expand the capacity of the Entebbe airport, including modern automation capacity. All the border points, starting with Malaba, Mpondwe, Elegum, Tukura, should be treated as export and tourism points and have the private sector involved, involved in the design and setup of the hubs. This address is an initiative masterminded by the Presidential Advisory Committee on Exports and Industrial Development. Audrey Kruabogo is the committee chairperson whose gospel for marketing Ugandan exports remains exclusive. In this audience, there are people from tourism who will be in it. There are people from coffee, people from tea, so that we can really take a compound view of our country and deliver one punch when we go to a market. Eh? We will replicate this in seven areas once this one takes off in June. Players in the tourism sector described the presidential directives as timely. Because when tourists come here, they eat eggs, they eat potatoes, they eat everything, you know, that, it, that every Ugandan is producing. And what Uganda has been lacking is the market. Now, when we market, when we do, do things that improve the numbers of tourists that come to Uganda, uh, it helps all of us. So I'm excited about what the president of Uganda has just said today, and I hope we can, con they can implement what they've said. The occasion was also graced by the presence of the Serbian Minister for Internal and Foreign Trade, Tomislav Momirovic. Part of the reasons for his visit was to invite President Museveni for the opening of the Ugandan Trade Center in Serbia, slated for June 2023. The center is meant to market and sell Uganda's coffee, bananas, chocolate, grains and tourism in the region. Serbia is excited to host Expo Exhibition in Belgrade. It presents a tremendous opportunity for Ugandan companies to showcase themselves on European markets. We look forward to working closely with Uganda to facilitate your participation in existing events. I thank them for bringing us processors of pineapples and buyers of our products. I accept the invitation to come to Belgrade to open the Uganda Trade Hub. A memorandum of understanding was signed between Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovations with the Private Sector Foundation to catalyze Uganda's quest for increased exports. Henry Okrut, UBC. Now, President Yuri Kaguta Museveni has donated 300 million shillings to NRM party acquired in court awards as defama defamatory damages caused to his personality and his inner security circle by Nation Daily Monitor publication newspaper during the second COVID-19 lockdown under a screaming defamatory headline titled Museveni and his inner security details vaccinated against COVID-19 using China's Sinovac vaccine. The money was delivered by the president's lawyers to the party secretariat on Thursday. Philip Aguta with more. 
President Museveni had instructed his lawyers to sue Daily Monitor newspaper in 2021 after Daily Monitor defamed his personality and that of his inner security details under a screaming defamatory headline titled Museveni and his inner security details vaccinated against COVID-19 using China Sinovac vaccine. This didn't go down well with the president despite his directive at the time that frontline health workers should be the first to be vaccinated. His Excellency, of course, was not happy with that because it went contrary to, to, to what we know of him and his character and the statements that he made publicly. So he gave us instructions as lawyers to, to sue for defamation, which we did. The absence of the substantive evidence to hold the fulcrum of the case in court, the paper developed a cold feet and the matter was settled out of the court. With a reparable court award of Ugandan shillings 300 million to President Museveni. Midway through the trial, uh, Monitor newspaper requested that this uh, suit is settled amicably between the parties. So they agreed to apologize and publish the apology, which they did. With the payment of the court award, the president has donated the money to the NRM party. The Ugandan shillings, a 300 million lump sum pay, was received by the party officials headed by the Secretary General Richard Todong. They pledged to use the money to set up party offices in Greater Luero district. We congratulate His Excellency the President for winning this battle. And that means anybody is free to go and challenge cases of defamation against the Moroha. And that tells you how transparent our legal systems are. That if the President can go to court and win a case, it speaks volume to our system. So we thank the President through his lawyers and we also congratulate the lawyers and we appreciate this generous donation to the party. To also thank the Secretary General and the entire team for choosing Luero District as the beneficiary of this precedent setting uh, initiative and uh, I want also to commit on behalf of the Luero district, we have already engaged with them and the, the land is available and we are ready to start as, as a party. Philip Aguta for UBC News in Kampala. The State Minister for Veteran Affairs, Jacob Obothoboth, has been taken to the Criminal Investigations Directorate at Chibuli for questioning over the ongoing misuse of iron chips meant for the vulnerable communities in Karamoja region. Obothoboth, who is the Member of Parliament for West Budama Central, had donated 137 iron chips towards the roofing of the Catechist House at St. Andrew's Church of Uganda. However, the iron sheets were later picked on Thursday by his bodyguards from the church's stores where they had been kept. Obothoboth becomes the fourth minister to be charged in the widening scandal following ministers Amos Lugolobi, Agnes Nandutu, Mary Gorete Chitutu, who have since been charged before the anti-corruption court in Kololo over mismanagement of Karamoja relief items. Now, the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions has vowed to stay concrete investigation, stay in concrete investigations in the murder of the late prosecutor, Joanne Kagezi, no matter the time it will take to ensure perpetrators of her demise are brought to book and her family to receive real justice. The Director of Public Prosecutions, Her Lordship Jane Francis Abodo, made the remarks during a press conference aimed at commemorating the Joanne Kagezi Memorial Lecture and the Prosecutor's Symposium slated for next week. We have the details. Our host, DPP Uganda. The Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions is set to hold the 6th annual Joan Kagezi Memorial Lecture, who was murdered in cold blood on March 30th, 2015, while on duty. The planned annual prosecutor's symposium, scheduled for 25th to 27th of April 2023, will be held under the theme, 
effective prosecution of organized crimes to foster sustainable economic development, equipping prosecutors with knowledge and skills on how to tackle criminal cases will be one of the major aims of the symposium. The annual prosecutor symposium is a meeting that brings together all prosecutors in the office of the DPP, prosecutors from agencies with delegated prosecutorial mandate, and key criminal justice stakeholders to dialogue on how to improve management and prosecution of criminal cases generally. According to the Director of Public Prosecutions, Jen Francis Tabodo, commemorating the late Joan Kages is essential. She is described as having offered great services to the country in regard to criminal justice. Because Joan's death woke us up as an office, we would always walk with our files, go to court, make all the noise, object to bail. When there's a conviction on murder, ask for the maximum. We want death with confidence, without fearing anything. After the death of Joan, that stopped. The prosecutors get scared. Despite her rendered services to the nation, unconcluded investigations into her murder remains the mission that the DPP are ruthlessly pursuing to its logical conclusion. Our criminal law is that the evidence has to be beyond reasonable doubt. You are not going to bring cases on mainly suspicion or you are not going to bring in people and um, just because they, 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 they are suspects and charge them would be cheating ourselves, would be cheating Joan's children, would be cheating Joan's family. When the new director CID came into office, those are one of the six cases that we told him we must work on. The DPP also cited the need to protect witnesses under the witness protection law, following their importance in case handling. We shall have confidence. Some of the witnesses who may fear to actually report a crime will now come up and report a crime because they'll be confident that once they report a crime, the state will protect them. We need enough resources. Like I told you, you don't only protect the witness, you protect their family, you protect their associates. Because the way crime is committed now. The annual prosecutor's symposium will be held at Imperial Royal Hotel in Kampala, whereas the John Kagez Memorial Lecture will be held in Munyonyo on the 28th of April 2023, and President Yoweri Kaguta Museveni will be the chief guest. Rebecca Natongo, UBC News. Police has confirmed loss of property in damages by fire that gutted Ntinda Police Post at 9.40 p.m. last night. According to Kampala Metropolitan po Spokesperson Patrick Onyango, among the destroyed items in the inferno were police uniforms, police quarters and files among other essential commodities. Last night, police and other rescuers fought tooth and nail to put off a fire that caught in Tinder Police Post leaving properties that comprised of police uniforms, housing units for police constables, and administrative files, among other items in our shares. We are investigating circumstances under which our barracks, our Tinder Police barracks, uh, got burned, destroyed properties worth millions of shillings of police officers, uh, particularly five officers were affected. The five officers lost their houses and the, uh, their properties were completely destroyed. Uh, properties like uniform, police uniform, shoes, uniform parts, household properties. Neighbors joined the efforts with the police officers and a team of rescuers to stop the fire flames from spreading to other places. Kampala Metropolitan Police Spokesman Patrick Onyang confirmed the tragedy that destroyed lots of items. Fire also destroyed file of old, old files of traffic uh, and the it also destroyed 10 number plates that were uh, 
exhibits in the offices uh, that were exhibits. But the motorcycles, motor vehicles that were parked at the, at the parking yard were not affected. They did not get destroyed. Fire did not reach there. The offices are also safe. Fire did not reach the offices. Uh, so the station is safe. The uniforms had a severe nut All of those things got bad. Even my plates, my mattresses, my bed sheets, all of got bad. Onyango says they are to relocate officers whose units were affected by the night inferno, lamenting that investigations are underway. Right now, we are trying to resettle our officers who are affected by fire. By fire fire we want to see where we can get accommodation for them for them to stay in the in the meantime and also to provide for them necessities and the police uniform uh, police sho shoes uniform parts so that they get back to work so that they begin a new life and begin working is the officer one I'm Wai Vanjuko for UBC. Thank you, Ivan Juko. Now, the parliamentary caucus of the NRM and independent members of parliament have resolved to advise the president of the Republic of Uganda, President Yuri Kaguta Museveni, to send back the anti homosexuality bill 2023 to parliament w with proposals for its improvement. Now, this decision was made during a meeting at Kololo ceremonial grounds in the presence of the national chairperson of the NRM and president of Uganda. The anti-homosexuality bill 2023 was passed by parliament on the 21st of March 2023. However, according to the provisions of the constitution of Uganda, bills passed by parliament must be assented to by the president before they become law. Now, during the meeting, the NRM parliamentary caucus and independent members of parliament received a keynote address on the anti-homosexuality bill 2023 delivered by the president. I want to congratulate the honorable members of parliament on your stand on the Ebitingwa. That's what the Banyankwele call the what they call homosexuals. Congratulations. I, I congratulate you for for that strong stand. It is good that you rejected the pressure from the imperialists. And this is what I told them. Whenever they come to me, I say, you please shut up. I congratulate you for making this very strong stand. And I congratulate all the other Ugandans, the bishops, the Uh, the, the other religious people and the citizens. Europe is lost. So they, they also want us to be lost. But in order to fight, we must be patriotic. If we are parasitic in the mind, in the mind of, a, of a parasite, there's no way you can fight. That's how you become a prostitute. Because you fear to sacrifice, you fear difficulties, somebody says, I will give you money if you become a prostitute. Those who, who, who like easy life end up as prostitutes. And that's what they want us to be. They want us to be, they want Africa to be prostitutes. Do what we don't believe in because we want money. So I told Anita Mong, Anita Mong, you tell, and I've come now to tell you here. Anita Mong, you tell those people that we can fight, but we must be patriots. Uh, Sharon informed us that currently in the US and other developed countries, there is medical therapy that is used to actually transform these people into the normal lives that they were before. 
because a number of the homosexuals later in life regret their actions and they want to revert back, especially those that change their sexes, those that go into surgery and maybe or take these uh, medications or hormones and then they turn into either men or women. In future, when they grow up, they regret their actions and there is therapy to turn them back into what they were. How, how many, the figures she gave, the ones who had become back? Uh, Your Excellency, it is estimated from just one um, doctor that over 1,000, there were more than 1,000. Sharon Slater and what she says in her book, there is a book she wrote that it's called uh, Stand for the Family. I'm sure some of you have seen it. But she talks about the, ag the agency or uh, an NGO that they have formed that she talked about. It is called Sexual Orientation Change Effort. It is an agency, it's, it's already existing in their country. And so, Honorable Pendi said they are willing to bring it here to help those of our people who have got themselves into that area and they want to change. So they have some doctors and they have some, a system that helps to change those people to being normal again. So if we put the law that, uh, that criminalizes all these other things they do in our society. But for those who want to change, provide a formula through which they can change to becoming normal again, I think our law will be complete. That's what I think. Mr. President, homosexuality is about sexual intercourse. When you look at sexual intercourse, it's a thing of the brain. Sexual intercourse has nothing to do with the genitalia. In the brain, there is a small piece, an organ, so small, the size of a lentil. It's called the limbic system. It's what decides for a human being to be happy or not happy. And when you look at sexual intercourse, when you are having sexual intercourse, that's the greatest pleasure you can ever have as a human being. We equate, it, we equate it to a degree of more than 150 uh, degrees. Mr. President, you get to agree that human beings operate on electrical current. Now, should you gain electrical current higher than the what your brain can get, you obviously run mentally sick. You go derailed. But let me narrow my discussion to homosexuality. Homosexuality, obviously, just like other doctors agree, it's more to do with a psychological perspective rather than a medical perspective. When you are declared mentally sick, that's the word we use, there is evidence that you have more or less neurotransmitters. Those are dopamine, uh, I won't go through that. But with homosexuality, it has nothing to do with that. And kindness. UBC News Tonight. Now, Uganda National Examination Board is investigating circumstances under which primary leaving examination slips of 2019 for over 3,000 pupils in Kampala schools went missing. While addressing the press on the activities of registration of candidates for 2023 at Media Center in Kampala, the Director Examinations UNEB, Mike Nangosia Masiche, said they worked out an amicable arrangement with KCCA to ensure that the result slips of these learners are reprinted and issued in good time. Nav Kavarida reports. The registration process for candidates to sit the 2023 examinations at primary, lower secondary and advanced level 
commenced and the normal exercise will go on until May 31st, 2023. Uganda National Examinations Board has set a period for late registration which attracts surcharge June 1st to 30th for PLE. It will be 100% UCE, 50% and USCE, 50% on the normal registration fee of 34,000 shillings, 164,000 shillings and 186,000 shillings, respectively. July 1st to 31st, 100% for PLOE will remain 68,000, 100% will translate into 328,000, and 100% USCE will translate into 372,000. The board has warned school administrators against charging fees not prescribed by UNEB and misappropriation of examination registration fee. According to the UNEB Act 2021, any anomalies identified in the registration exercise deliberately attracts a fine of 40 million shillings or imprisonment not exceeding 10 years. So government aided schools are put on notice not to register privately sponsored candidates as government-sponsored candidates. This is a fraudulent practice that causes financial loss to government. Any head of an examination center or school director that will be found indulging in this practice shall pay twice the amount that has been defrauded. Parents and guardians of the candidates have been urged to take interest in the registration of their children and ensure they provide the right biodata like the name and date of birth. Meanwhile, Uganda National Examinations Board has clarified on the issue of the missing 2019 PLE pass slips for 3,972 learners in 51 schools in Kampala, saying the results in question were duly printed by UNEB, signed for and taken by a designated officer of KCCA. We have, as a matter of practice, when we get this, we block out uh, the serial numbers of these certificates and the investigations are ongoing. We would like to establish the reasons why, but the actions that we have taken are for emergency to get the candidates to sit the examinations without undue inconvenience. UNEB officials say the second phase of validation of examination centers will take place from April 24th to May 10th, 2023. I'm Nafka Farida. And Joel Vubia in Kampala. Major General Henry Masiko, Chief of Political Commissar Inspectorate Team, have inspected the construction works done by the UPDF Engineering Brigade in the district of Moroto and Soroti. Monitoring and evaluation team was impressed by the work so far done and commended the site engineers for implementing the presidential directive of good work and timely execution. Haruna Mutasasara with more. The UPDF committee, which consists of 10 people, has camped in the eastern region on physical monitoring and evaluation mission of the construction works done by the UPDF Engineering Brigade in the region. UPDF Chief Political Commissar and the head of the inspectorate team, Major General Henry Masco, in company of the local leaders, inspected works in the district of Taleja, Botebo, Moloto, Mbali, and Source districts to ascertain maintenance works on the Hesse Center force under construction by the UPDF Engineering Brigade. This leg, we've been here in Moroto. There are two main undertakings, one for the office of Prime Minister, where there are some renovations of their offices and residences, and then the Minister of Health project here, where they are putting up the oxygen plant. And this is a, a replication of what our engineers have put up in other uh, hospitals. The projects inspected in the motor district include regional housing units of the Office of the Prime Minister and the oxygen plant at Moroto Refer Hospital. The committee chairperson, Major General Henry Masco, commended the site engineers for their tireless efforts and site discipline. Our, our work is to reinforce our engineers because this is the first time they are coming out to do work outside the army and we we are coming in timely to ensure first of all 
they meet the intent of the commanding chief who uh, has trust in the workings of the engineers brigade but also uh, to give on spot guidance to our team so that they they maintain uh, the expectation of good service delivery Jenema Skoleta guided his team on the inspection of the another oxygen plant at Sorot Refer Hospital, which is at 70% completion. The leadership in Moroto and Sorot District thanked UPDF for entrusting the engineering brigade with the projects, saying it has reduced on the construction costs, time and quality compared to private contractors. Konjungo Sorita, who is my president, that whereas the, the intention for which the piloting was done in health and education, was to gauge how effective our army can do this work. I don't have any shade of doubt that these people have proved beyond reasonable doubt that they are better than another department. Haruna Mtesa Sira, UBC News. Talk with freedom. Get MTN Freedom Voice bundles that don't expire. Dial star 100 star 21 hash or my MTN app for more bundles. Together, we're unstoppable. The Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development under the auspices of the East African Community will host the 10th East African Petroleum Conference and Exhibition 2023 from the 9th to the 11th of May 2023 at the Kampala Serena Hotel in Uganda. Take full advantage of the investment opportunities in the East African region's vibrant oil and gas sector. To find out more on how to sponsor, exhibit, or attend the 10th EAPCE 23, visit www.eapce23.ac. Int. Do you need data collection services, data analysis and reporting, monitoring and evaluation systems? Then contact Mult Technologies, a professional research firm that has provided many organizations with timely research solutions for over 15 years. For more information, visit www.mt.co.ug or call us on 0704-913-399 or 0782-602-963. Visit our office in Kampala at Sayuni Complex in Tinder, Mode Technologies, your professional research firm. This is a quick call. I'm almost out of minutes. I'm not going to the center. Why rush through such important conversations? Airtel Uganda has made it possible for you to call across all networks in Uganda at the best rates with the new Bona Voice Bandos. Stay connected anytime, anywhere, with minutes valid for calls on all networks. Dial star 100 star on hash. Select Voice Bandos and select Bona Voice Bandos today. Airtel, the smartphone network. Echi tufuru eche nja uro, ge mazika agatari gaburi jo, age kuli deri nya. Ebi ridebiyo mukachira, ebi e unisa. Kosa nja tu zebi fugebi echi nansi, nebi darabi inji. Ha, okuwa ngena kuzomwe zabiri mukaga, okutusa ngena kuzomwe zabiri muenda omwe ziguno. Tuwe gate koku Commonwealth Resort ya munyonyo, mumori sogo urambuzi, ugwa Pearl of Africa, Tourism Expo, bidi abiri mwe satu. Jangovu mbule na teche nja uro, echini mutisaweche bi obulambuzi. Chetu kuteka teke day, tuchari de ku www.powate.co.ug o booking age for two, atenga bo iti kate koku iga, kosa na okuvumbula biyo badde tomanyi. Omwori sogo Pearl of Africa Tourism Expo, bidi abiri mwe satu, mukutusi wako, Uganda Tourism Board, ngabari wamune competitiveness an enterprise development project. Explore Uganda, the pearl of Africa. At Timex Nutrition Center, we advise you on the right foods to eat, exercise profile to adopt, and lifestyle strategies which are compatible to your blood group and genotype. This empowers your body to prevent and treat many diseases like diabetes, blood pressure, arthritis, ulcers, obesity, and many others. For more information, find us at our head office in Kampala on NASA Road, Conrad Plaza, second floor, or call 0758-819-952 or 0778-288-361. We also have other branches in Bara and Jinja.
Welcome back from that break and we're glad that you're still with us here in UBC News tonight, live from Nile Avenue. Now in more news, Parliament has remained unconvinced over the 80% budget cut for the education sector for the financial year 2023-2024, which has affected key education programs. The budget cut, among others, has affected the grant aid of about 128 primary schools and over 87 secondary schools, loan schemes for midwives and allied health workers, deployment of new teachers and construction of seed schools, among others. Susan Naonga reports. 80% budget cuts, especially as of subventions, the Ministry of Education and Sports budget savings has not been adjusted to cater for those shortfalls. The report on the Sectorial Committee on Education and Sports on the Ministerial Policy and Budget Estimates for the Education Sector for the financial 2023-2024 has been presented to the House. The report, among others, indicates budget cuts for some of the education priorities, with at least 128 grant-aiding primary schools affected, 87 secondary schools, and loan schemes of midwives and allied health workers also affected. Right now, the speaker and members, there is a big problem here. Uh, the board is not, has not been provided with funds because of those cuts, and the universities are threatening to dismiss the students from their studies. Others affected by the 80% budget cut include construction of seed schools, rehabilitation of traditional schools, deployment of over 3,000 new teachers, and National Council of Education. Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Education recently recruited 4,500 teachers and gave them appointment letters. But they are not posted. Members of parliament anticipate that this is going to affect the quality of education, especially in the already struggling UPE and USE schools, and also create an imbalance in the education sector. Find a teacher is earning more than a head teacher. So how is the school going to be run when some of the teachers are, are being paid highly than the supervisors? We have a number of universities but you look at the employability of the graduates. We need to put more money in the standard of education and the specific standards for our graduates. The decision to have the education budget cut, according to the State Minister for Finance in charge of general duties, Henry Musasi, was adopted to suit the current financial demand, but has room for adjustment. In this era, we still have a university that has asbestos, after they have been declared cancer, causing cancer? Further analysis has showed that some interventions are doing critical activities where the 80% rule may not apply. The state minister in charge of primary education, Joyce Moriku, says the government should now prepare to encounter all implications arising from the budget cut, which among others may include a decline in the education standards, especially internationally. The implication of not really allocating funds for the seed schools, renovation of these schools and the congestion in the primary schools directly affects the performance of education and the quality of education of our children. When we don't provide the money, at the end of it, we will not meet the international standards. Deputy Speaker of Parliament Thomas Taibo also warned on the likely impacts of the budget cut. If you want degrees of universities to be recognized globally, to be considered that they are very important, we must have curriculums, curriculums which are approved. We must have universities that are well assessed. But now we are increasing the number of universities without increasing funding for National Council for Education that is able to give support. So, The Education Budget for Financial 2023-2024 has been referred to the Budget Committee for further scrutiny and approval. Susan Naonga reporting for ABC TV. UBC News Tonight takes a very short break, but we return with more stories. Don't move an inch. Jericho, 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 
Mundava, Mundava, best movies I teach you. When I'm going to watch the Muscari, because of the cover that is very far. Is you serious? Is yes, you? Ah, what can I watch? Yeah, you stay put on it. Add kilometers to your legs. And you get your sugar. Will you buy meat from Umaru? And Umaru refuses to give you enough meat. Mama! Show him that they don't joke with you. Umaru, quick! Kakaruka no kurunji, kweta gako mtu wa kuyamba ko. Norwecho, tuja kute na wembele sanibe, osoburo kukule chisinga. Awa muu, tere chiturema. Are you dead of high fees and slow... At Timex Nutrition Center, we advise you on the right foods to eat, exercise profile to adopt and lifestyle strategies which are compatible to your blood group and genotype. This empowers your body to prevent and treat many diseases like diabetes, blood pressure, arthritis, ulcers, obesity and many others. For more information, find us at our head office in Kampala on Nasa Road, Conrad Plaza, second floor or call 0758-819-952 or 0778-288-361. We also have other branches in Bara and Jinja. Glow as you are with the new Spark 10 series smartphone from Airtel in partnership with Techno. Own the timelines with picture perfect selfies using the 32 megapixel selfie camera, 256 GB storage, G88 gaming processor, and a strong battery to last the whole day. <laughs> Toa Kana. The Spark 10 smartphone comes with free 3 GB from Airtel and 100% bonus on weekly and monthly bundles every month for three months. So you can stay connected to a world of possibilities. Dial star 100 star 5 hash to enjoy free data. The new Spark 10 is available in all selected techno shops countrywide. Airtel, the smartphone network in partnership with Techno. Stop at nothing. Do you need data collection services, data analysis and reporting, monitoring and evaluation systems? Then contact Mold Technologies, a professional research firm that has provided many organizations with timely research solutions for over 15 years. For more information, visit www.mt.co.ug or call us on 0704-913-399 or 0782-602-963. Visit our office in Kampala at Sayuni Complex in Tinder, Mood Technologies, your professional research firm. Are you tired of high fees and slow transfer time when sending money? Look no further. Airtel Money is here to revolutionize the way you move your money. We have revised our rates and now sending money from Airtel to other networks in Uganda, East Africa and to the rest of the world has never been more affordable. Plus, you can trust Airtel Money to get your money where it needs to go quickly and safely. Simply dial star 185 hash and start sending money. Switch to Airtel Money today and experience unbeatable rates and top-notch services for all your local and international money transfer needs. Airtel Money, instant, secure, borderless. This isn't just a girl. She is the future. This is a teacher, a doctor, a community leader, our future president. Their support meant so much to me. And as a teenage girl, I stayed focused and was protected from child marriage and teenage pregnancy. I will support other girls against child marriage and teenage pregnancy. Take action. Report any case of defilement or child marriage to the police or call Saudi 116. Welcome back from that break. And now into business. Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization Council of Ministers have pledged to protect the region's water bodies from being depleted of their resources. Now, the ministers were attending the fifth regular session of the Fisheries and Aquaculture Sectoral Council 
of ministers of the Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization, during which the Minister for Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries, Frank Tumwebaze, took over as the chairperson of the regional body. Tumwebaze and fellow ministers from Kenya, Tanzania and Burundi vowed to regulate resource utilization of Lake Victoria and other water bodies to benefit to save them from depletion. Promoting interventions that reduce pressures on the lake. It is really my pitch and uh, message to you today. It is not going to be business as usual for those that have been misusing Lake Victoria and its catchment areas following the line minister's renewed charge to ensure proper utilization of the resources. Whatever efforts we have on in that ecosystem, they must be coordinated efforts. Now that there are no borders in the water, yeah. we believe it is a good practice, it is sensible, it is an act of nature that we should not overfish. Even historically, those fishermen who didn't even have so much government control would reach a time and withdraw from the lake to, to allow breeding, to allow fertilization, to allow regeneration of the lake. This was during the fifth regular the session of the Fisheries and Aquaculture Sectoral Council of Ministers of the Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization after a three-day conference at Speak Resort Munyonyo near Kampala. I told that the stock of the Nile perch, for example, have declined by 33% just between 2021 and 2022. Therefore, we cannot stand aside and let these unsustainable practices continue at their detrimental to millions of our people whose livelihood depend on the land. We should be able to look into them and see how we can help our communities. We are the leaders of here today so that we can make a difference in the lives of these communities. Therefore, as I conclude, I want to encourage all of us to actively contribute to the deliberations and provide a clear policy direction for a better management of Victoria and the basin. My wish uh, still stands that this meeting is the best opportunity for successful sharing and a real contribution to the achievement of the objectives of the LVFO. I conclude. The Minister of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries, Frank Tumwebasi, appealed to all stakeholders in the utilization of Lake Victoria and its catchment areas to desist from acts that might deplete its resources. Our commitment to LVFO is a testament that we need to act together as countries to, to protect uh, the lake and also to ensure that our populations continue to get fish resources sustainably. We shall work and support the Secretariat to ensure that the, 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 the intention and objectives of the, promo, of, the, of the initial promoters of this organization continue to be realized. I thank you. Tumwebaze, who is also now the incoming chairperson of the Fisheries and Aquaculture Sectoral Council of Ministers of the Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization, also appealed to regional leaders and civil servants to ensure that whatever they discuss is for the benefit so, of the people. So, LVFO, the challenge I want to give you we want to see you so strong on how we can protect our lakes. Really. You know, these organizations, these meetings, these travels, they take a lot of our time and money. So we should dedicate to them really if they are, they are, they are solving a problem. The State Minister for East African Affairs, Mago de Equia, officiated the closing of the meeting and appealed to all communities and regional leaders to sustainably use Lake Victoria and its catchment areas for equitable development. The lake is one single entity. It behaves singularly. The fish of, 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 in Uganda can cross into Kenya without a passport and does not require anything. To be so whether Kenya has got it, uh, only, only 3% or 10%, you can find all the fish migrating there and you will get more, 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 more things than we do. So our problem therefore is not the movement of fish, but rather how do we manage that common resource sustainably. 
The three-day meeting attracted ministers, permanent secretaries, and staff of Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization. And the recommendations there were adopted, except for one item, which was also discussed and a consensus reached. And that item was... And now over to sports. Proline Football Club has remained on course for a return to the Federation of Uganda Football Association. Big league following a 3-1 victory over Sparta. Nine. Goals by Ibrahim Sendi, Kevin Oboa and Jeremy Tim were enough for Proline Football Club that played this latest Scorpion group fixture at the MTN Philip Omondi Stadium in Lugogo. This was Proline Football Club's fifth game under new coach Simon Peter Mogera who has won three, lost one and drawn the other with his next game against Fire this coming Sunday. Now in other games played in the Kampala Region League, Kazi United beat Wembley 2-1. Table toppers Black Stars and Nintendo shared points in a one-all draw. St. Mary's aged fire 2-1 and a Water FC outlasted in Zambia FC by two goals 2-1 and Lufula humbled La Masia 3-0. There were also victories from Katda and Chireka United while Nabingo versus Boyogere ended 2-2. The Kampala Region Football League is of two groups, Scorpion and Cobra. The top team from each group plays the other for a place against the Buganda Region winners, winners to determine who qualifies for the FUFA Big League. We'd like to thank you so much for your company this evening. Do join us for more stories in our second edition at 10 o'clock. I'm Molero in Masikakazi. Inspiring Uganda. Are you tired of high fees and slow transfer time when sending money? Look no further. Airtel Money is here to revolutionize the way you move your money. We have revised our rates and now sending money from Airtel to other networks in Uganda, East Africa and to the rest of the world has never been more affordable. Plus, you can trust Airtel Money to get your money where it needs to go quickly and safely. Simply dial star 185 hash and start sending money. Switch to Airtel Money today and experience unbeatable rates and top-notch services for all your local and international money transfer needs. Airtel Money. Instant, secure, borderless. Did you know that our number one value as a nation is to respect and protect the environment? With the current population increase of Uganda and industrialization, this has increased pressure on the natural resources, resulting into environmental degradation and global warming. Developing countries like Uganda could face 80% of the global climate change effects by the year 2030 if no action is taken. Join us here on UBC TV, Inspiring Uganda, on our Echo Plus program, where we bring you an in-depth analysis of issues that are disastrous to our environment. Every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m., only on your loved station, The National Broadcaster. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. From the Union of Muslim Women and Organizations in Uganda, Ramadan Mubarak, Ramadan Karim. Labor Day or International Workers' Day is an annual holiday that takes place on 1st May to celebrate the achievements of workers. Uganda will join the rest of the world to celebrate under the theme Promoting Positive Work Culture and Ethics, a prerequisite 
for increased investment, employment opportunities and household incomes. Regardless of how you choose to celebrate, make sure you give yourself a pat on the back for all your success. Join us for the live celebrations on Monday, 1st May 2023 at Namutumba District Headquarters.